Good morning and welcome to Trinity's training page. Today's question of the day is brought to you by Mary Frances Clark. Uh, Mary was inquiring about our stick man here. These are our simulated gunners that we use in the field to uh, simulate multiple gun stations. Uh, Mary's question was, do I buy my stick men or do I make them myself? Uh, Mary, I, I made these particular stick men myself. Uh, I'm just, uh, I've been in construction before I trained dogs for years and I was just used to making things. So I thought, heck, I can, I can make that uh, pretty economical. Uh, and so that's what I did. Um, let me kind of explain to you what we got here. We got a piece of, uh, of 24 inch wide, uh, just vinyl sign material like you would get at a, uh, at a sign shop. It's what they make banners out of. Uh, this is uh, the heavy duty. They make two different kinds. They make a lightweight and then a heavy weight. But uh, all I did was just, I bought 24 inch wide and I think I bought 50 foot because I have uh, 10 of these, okay? And they're about five foot tall. And um, you know, some people are probably thinking, well, why in the world would you need 10 stick men? Well, you, you may want to simulate, uh, say a, a quad in the open, okay? You might want to put three over here on the right hand side for a flyer station. Throw a couple flyer crates out there with it. And then you put a you know a single gunner out there that maybe is going to retire, and then you got an, another uh, single gunner over here at your third station, and then over here maybe to the left up close you got three more simulating the flyer station there, and uh, you know that's so I mean that's a total of eight, and uh, you know I always figured having more than you need is better than having not enough, so that's why I have ten. But anyway, that being said. The way I made this is with the vinyl material and I just cut a, the shape of a man out. I like to leave my arms connected. The first few that I made, I just cut straight down and they kind of flop and first one thing or another. And I mean, that has its advantages too. Kind of helps the dogs uh, with being distracted uh, with the gunners moving around in the field and everything. But I just, I just chose to leave these attached. Uh, the next step was I, I took some uh, one inch PVC pipe and uh, I drilled a uh, with a step bit, which is a bit that has several different sizes. I drilled through until I got to a uh, five eighths hole. And then on this side, it put a small hole. That's how your step bit works. And then I just took a, a 10, a 10 24 uh, screw. I don't know if you can see that or not, but, uh, and I just put it through you know, drilled a small hole on each side, put it through there. You can see that on both sides. And this is your top bar. This is 24 inches long from side to side. It's 24 inches, like your banner material. And then I just kind of rolled it around a couple times and put uh, just some self-tapping metal screws in there. Just the, the hex head uh, version of a self-tapping metal screw. Uh, you can find those in the air conditioning department at Home Depot. You can get the pipe in the plumbing department, and you can get the bolt in the hardware. Okay, now for the bottom, same principle. We took a piece of one inch PVC pipe. We drilled through it both directions until we got a five eighths hole. Rolled the legs around, put a couple of uh, screws in it just to hold it in place. And you get out in the field, you get to ready to put these things up. It's real simple. You can roll them up. When I had deer skin build my, my training trailer, which is an eight hole trailer with an ATV storage, I had them build some drawers especially for these. It's real easy when you get out in the field, you got your pole sticking in the ground. Just put it on your pole. I'll stick my fingers in there roll it right out and I mean literally in just a couple seconds you got yourself a gun station okay well that's how we make the actual stick man now for the pole okay I'm a big Home Depot shopper like I said I've done construction for quite a few years before I trained dogs so that being said I go to the electrical department for all my needs for my pole I got a piece of half inch metal 
conduit like you would run uh, electrical wire through, like you would make an electrical chase to run through. It's half inch, and the first thing I do is I cut it to my length, however tall you want to make your stick men. Some people like to make them six foot. I like to just make mine five, just because that's how my material's worked out. First thing y'all want to do is I want to cut a notch in the top of that right there, and I think I actually just done this in the field with a hacksaw one day. Just put a notch in there and took a pair of pliers and broke it off. Real archaic, real simple, but it works. Now on the important end here, this is what goes in the ground. And here in Texas, the soil is extremely hard about 364 days out of the year. So what I did is I took a, a cutoff saw and I cut this on just a 45 degree angle. And I cut it, it's actually about it's actually about that long. I guess you can see all that in the camera, about 12, 12 inches or so long. Um, and then I'll cut another piece. I think this one is about maybe five inches. That's my step. And I forced this piece down into the, uh, into the uh, pipe, which wasn't too much of a chore. This is actually half inch OD and this is half inch ID. So it was a pretty, pretty snug fit but I did get it in there without too much work then I welded my step on there and I welded around the edge right there um, you don't have to weld if you don't have a welder but um, you could drill a couple holes and put your couple screws in there and then I'm sure you could come up with something for the step my friend he took and drilled a couple of a uh, couple of holes through a piece of square tubing and then he slid that on there and uh, um, put a couple of screws and then he pounded it on down there a little bit tighter and screwed it thin and that that suffice for welder because he didn't have a welder and didn't know how to weld but most places you can get a machine shop to weld these up to you for a couple bucks a piece they're not it takes them 10 seconds so anyway uh, that's how we uh, that's how we make our stick men you're gonna see us use these guys quite a lot um, sometimes we'll put you know, eight or 10 of them out in the field and throw off a four or five. I want to get my dogs to be underwhelmed when we go to a hunt test or a field trial. I don't, I don't want them to be blown away when they look out there and there's, in the open, there's uh, two gun stations out there and there's, you know, two or three guys at each station. And then, you know, we got a couple retired guns out here, you know, a couple guys in white coats that are gonna retire. I don't want them to be overwhelmed there. I want them to be underwhelmed. Um, I don't train a lot of field trial dogs. I train mostly hunt test dogs, but I train the same way as, as a lot of the, the trialers do with the white coat setups. I think it builds confidence in the dog's ability to mark and you know to be able to see the gun stations out in the field. You'll see my, uh, my helper, Nikki, she's gonna, she'll wear a white coat a lot even when we've got holding blinds and things set up out in the field to train with, um, she'll she'll wear a white coat a lot. I want these guys to know where I'm wanting them to look, okay? I do a lot of cues with my dogs to let them know how you're looking in the right spot, right there, that's it, right there. And that helps. If, if I can just have her stand up and walk out there, uh, even if even if we're using these stick men, that that really helps a lot. But Mary, I do appreciate your question. You guys have a great day, and we're going to go get Trinity and get her going.